This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description below. When it comes to energy storage, our first thought is usually lithium ion batteries. But what if we went old school? Like just spinning things really fast and capturing that kinetic energy kind of old school. I thought I'd explain an example of a mechanical battery, the flywheel. And are they making a comeback? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. The versatility and dropping costs of lithium ion batteries have made them a popular option for not only consumer electronics, but also grid scale energy storage. But it's not the only solution that's out there. The often overlooked technology of flywheels has been reinvented and may be a good fit for supporting renewable energy like solar and wind. High power density, long lifetime, high efficiency, and being carbon free has boosted interest in flywheel technology. But how do flywheels stack up over other energy storage technologies? The world has been shifting from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources in order to achieve low carbon emissions and maintain cheap prices. Both electricity consumption and renewable energy generation have been increasing all over the world in the past few years. In 2018, global energy consumption reached almost 25,000 terawatt hours, and of that, solar and wind only accounted for about 1,827 terawatt hours, or about 5% of the total power generation in the world. Since renewables like solar and wind aren't available 24-7 and can't be turned on and off at any time, energy storage systems need to be placed together with solar and wind farms to make them more widely viable. But why do chemical battery installations get all of the buzz right now? Why not flywheels? I mean, the first question to ask is probably, flywheels? Really? Or maybe actually it's, what are flywheels? A flywheel contains a dual-function electric motor to store and generate energy. It operates like an electric motor in an EV to speed up the flywheel using electricity, so that kinetic energy is stored in the spinning wheel. Then when it's turned off, the dual function electric motor operates like a generator, and the mechanical energy stored in the rotating mass spins the generator's rotor, producing electricity. It's similar to how regen braking works in an EV, but when it comes down to it, a flywheel can be considered a big mechanical battery. To get a little nerdy for a second and talk about physics, the rotational energy of a rotating mass is directly proportional to the moment of inertia, or rotational mass, and angular velocity. That's, that's a lot. For example, imagine that you spin two car wheels of the same mass, one at 30 kilometers an hour and another at 100 kilometers per hour. Which one will be harder to break? You probably guessed the faster one. That's an example of angular velocity at work. Now let's say one of the wheels is 5 kilograms and the other is 10 kilograms. You speed them both up to the exact same velocity so they're both spinning at 30 kilometers per hour. Which one will be harder to stop this time? If you guess the heavier one, you got it. And that's an example of rotational mass at work. Optimizing the shape and increasing the rotational speed will boost the energy that's stored in a flywheel. However, speeding up the flywheel increases centrifugal forces it's subjected to, and the resistance of the material that it's made from limits the amount of energy a flywheel can store. The bottom line is, spinning a flywheel too fast can completely break it apart. Now that's obviously something you want to avoid, but as I mentioned earlier, this is something we've been trying to master for a long time. Flywheels were first used in potter wheels and spindles in ancient Mesopotamia to produce threads. Later they played an important role in the Industrial Revolution, when flywheels were used in engines and machines to smooth out the power delivered by the driving device. However, the first flywheel used exclusively for energy storage was built by John A. Howell in 1883 for a military application. In this case, the flywheel was installed in a Howell Mark I torpedo and worked as a propulsion source and provided directional balance. In the 1940s, the concept of flywheels was used for transportation by the Swiss company Orlikon when it released its carbon-free bus containing a flywheel for energy storage. The gyro bus used energy from the grid to spin up a flywheel system, which operated as a generator while it was on the move. Now, when the flywheel was completely charged at about 3,000 RPM, the bus could run for about 6 kilometers at speeds up to 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. Since then, several improvements have been made to flywheels in order to increase power storage capacity with safe operation. Flywheel energy storage systems, or FESS, are essentially composed of a few key components besides the flywheel and electric motor. It includes bearings, an enclosure, and a power electronic converter. FESS have bearings to support the rotor and resist against forces to maintain its position, which allows it to spin at the high velocities, but there's a downside there. Mechanical bearings require high-performance lubricants and frequent maintenance to operate properly, and they're also sensitive to friction that it generates. And that's one of the main losses for flywheels is the friction. To solve for that, expensive magnetic bearings are employed in flywheels that operate at high speeds in order to reduce maintenance basically to zero, since they don't require any lubrication at all. It also helps to increase efficiency due to their minimal losses. Flywheel energy storage systems fall into two categories, low speed and high speed. 
Low-speed flywheels are made up of steel and spin at rates up to 10,000 RPM. These are heavy and use the advantage of their angular mass to increase their stored energy, much like I talked about before. Now, on the other hand, modern flywheels that feature high power density and efficiency can reach up to 100,000 RPM, which makes it store more energy since the flywheel energy is proportional to the square of angular velocity. You still with me? Because I'm not sure I am. Advanced flywheels are housed in a vacuum enclosure to reduce aerodynamic drag. They also have air or magnetic suspension bearing technology to reach those high speeds and are made of materials with high strength to weight ratios like carbon and fiberglass. In practice, flywheels have fast response to frequency changes, making it a good solution to stabilize grid frequency when unstable variations occur. In addition to that, they can be completely charged within a few milliseconds and have considerably longer lifetimes of about 20 years compared to other technologies. They're highly efficient at about 95% and have a high power density so it can store more energy in a smaller space. And it's because of those advantages that they've been used in things like uninterrupted power supplies for industrial and commercial applications to provide backup for essential loads. Flywheels have also been used as control moment gyros in spacecraft like the International Space Station to hold the space station at a fixed altitude relative to the Earth's surface. They've been used in motorsports for hybrid propulsion systems and regenerative braking, like the Audi R18 e-tron that won Le Mans in 2012, 2013, and 2014. And they've also been used in the electrical grid to support the increasing spread of renewables. FESS have also been used in grid applications in order to provide ancillary services, such as frequency regulation and power fluctuation support. It's similar to how Tesla's Hornsdale Power Reserve has been used in Australia. Some examples are the Beacon Power 20 megawatt units installed in Steventown, New York, and Hazel Township, Pennsylvania to support frequency imbalances in the grid. These plants were commissioned in 2011 and 2014. Beacon's flywheel rotor is made up of a carbon fiber composite rim. Its flywheels spin up to 16,000 RPM and can completely charge and discharge for 175,000 cycles. Another company playing this game is Amber Kinetics. Their all-steel M32 model can provide 8 kilowatts of power for 4 hours, achieves efficiency higher than 86%, and offers 11,000 cycles. In 2018, the company in partnership with West Boylston Municipal Lighting Plant commissioned a 128 kilowatt, 512 kilowatt hour flywheel energy storage system in Massachusetts. This project is integrated into a grid connected solar array and has already discharged 116 megawatt hours. Amber Kinetics also installed another storage system, but now in China, to operate a 60 megawatt solar power plant in order to store electricity and improve grid stability. Since it commissioned in 2018, it's already stored 75.6 megawatt hours with no gas emission. But how do flywheels stack up over other energy storage systems? Compared to batteries, flywheels are made up of environmentally friendly materials that can be reused, and they may have higher capacity than lithium ion in flow batteries. In addition to that, batteries need to be recycled and replaced more frequently than flywheels, which have a much longer life cycle. In comparison to other mechanical energy storage systems such as compressed air and pumped hydro, flywheels reach higher efficiencies. So what's the catch with flywheels? Why haven't we been seeing them pop up in solar and wind farms everywhere? Well, the latest technology provides energy for just a few hours, and flywheels have high energy installation costs. According to one report, in 2016, FESS costs varied from $1,500 to $6,000 per kilowatt hour, and expected installation costs by 2030 will range from $1,000 to $3,900 per kilowatt hour. On the other hand, lithium-ion battery storage systems for utility-scale applications varied from $200 to $1,260 per kilowatt hour, and is expected by 2030 to see a reduction to between $77 and $574 per kilowatt hour. Flywheels are also beaten up by flow battery technology, which may reach between $108 and $576 per kilowatt hour by the same year. Another interesting analysis is the levelized cost of storage, which is directly comparable to LCOE, but for storage systems. In this analysis, the mean for flywheels might reach around $520 per megawatt hour in 2050, while lithium ion and vanadium redox flow batteries might have a mean between $280 and $220 per megawatt hour, respectively. Flywheels need to have a big cost reduction and performance boost, along with the development of new materials with high strength and low density for rotor materials, as well as improvements to the motor and generator itself. This means a lot of money and time spent on research and development, which is why flywheels have been overlooked in favor of the latest battery technologies. But there is an interesting hybrid approach. But before I get to that, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn more about physics and kinetic energy, check out the Science Essentials course at Brilliant. Physics was never really my strong suit, so brushing up on potential energy and kinetic energy really helped me wrap my head around flywheels. Even if physics makes your brain spin with angular velocity that's hard to stop, 
Brilliant has over 60 courses in other topics like mathematics, science, and computer science. They teach all of the concepts through fun and interactive challenges, which help you understand the why of something, not just the how. It helps to develop your intuition, which is my favorite part about Brilliant, and it taps into the way I learn. Go to brilliant.org slash undecided to sign up for free. The first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to the hybrid approach. Some recent studies and projects have been developed to verify the feasibility of integrating flywheels with batteries for hybrid energy storage systems. One example is the anti store project operated by Schwungrad Energy that's already received about 3 million euros funding for building out a one megawatt battery flywheel hybrid energy storage system to support grid stabilization and road. Another recent example is the 8.8 .8 megawatt lithium ion battery that's been integrated with a three megawatt flywheel system in El Melo in the Netherlands. It's going to assist with the integration of green power sources to the grid. These all look to be promising solutions and show that flywheels, although they're an old technology, may be making a bit of a comeback. Now jump into the comments and let me know what you think about old school mechanical batteries and if there are any other types that I should take a look at. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. As always, thanks to all my patrons and all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.